May the words of my uh, of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts not simply be acceptable, but be for a revolution. Amen. Last week we be, um, we began by thinking about hope and the hope that is found in the command to do justice, love kindness and compassion, and walk humbly with our God right now. I think one of the ways that we can pursue that is by trying to take a wider view of things rather than simply looking at the elephant as the tail and saying an elephant is like a rope or the leg and saying the elephant is like a tree or saying and looking at the ear and saying an elephant is like a hand fan. We must be willing to look at the whole of the issue, the whole of the elephant. It is through seeing the whole issue that we can start working towards true peace peace without addressing the issues of inequality and injustice is no peace at all. When we look at the issues of systemic poverty in Portland and the United States, I think we are naturally led to consider the housing crisis. When considering the housing crisis and systemic poverty in general, we can easily see how there are laws that are in place that are stacked against the poor and in particular the, the unhoused. Portsmouth Union Church knows a thing or two about unjust laws getting in the way of pursuing the justice of God. PUC has had to challenge governmental officials so that the commons could be built and so that previously unhoused people might have a home to stay in. Part of the challenge has been officials not knowing or not caring about the fullness of laws that have been changed so that good work can take place or of their treating organizations that are not seeking to make a profit in the same way that they might treat into, uh, large corporate land developers. In those times, PUC has had to stand up for what is right, has had to make their voice heard, has had to push against the tide to declare what is right. In the end, PUC has been successful in opening the commons and yet other congregations in Portland and many other places have not been able to. They have been stopped by corrupt government leaders and neighbors who, rather than declaring a love for God and neighbor, instead declare a love for money by saying, not in my backyard. The prophet Isaiah, similarly, is calling out the scribes and the judges, those who are writing legislation and declaring how it should be applied because they are doing so in ways that are against the most vulnerable. The prophet, of I the prophet Isaiah correctly designates God as being on the side of the vulnerable, the founding child, the widow, the poor. There is another way. There is a way of peace, whether you are inspired by the way of Jesus and his nonviolent direct action in healing his people's enemies and inspiring people to ridicule those who would take advantage of them in courts by giving them all of their clothes or if you're inspired by the way of Hillel and his own nonviolent direct action when he was commanded to recite all of Torah on one foot or die and said, what is hateful to you, do not do unto others. All the rest is commentary. Go and study. In the face of Rome's false peace, both of these movement leaders showed peace, showed new ways of bringing peace to the world rather than the false piece of Rome's forced assimilation. Or if you're inspired by someone or something else, there is another way, one that unites us all across lines of division to be a movement for peace for the world. True peace is not a way of assimilation, but rather one that sees how, whether we are very similar or very different, we are all affected by the crises that surround us. 